Yeah, because now, now, now I remember it's like a lot of the sports teams over there are owned by companies. That's so they, actually bad. So that they have, <laughs> Well, it's like a lot of them will have like the company name before the nickname and stuff. But I know there, there are others that will have a town name. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's actually terrible. That would be like having like the amazon slugs well, the walmart I think, um you know vipers I think, <laughs> uh... welcome to go go kaiju show where we have a healthy obsession with kaiju i'm your co-host kent and with me is your other co-host jason how's it going everyone and so, you got everything right <laughs> i blame you because no name <laughs> Maybe you should be doing the introductions. <laughs> so uh, we're discussing uh, for this episode, we're going to be discussing Netflix's uh, animated Ultraman movie that came out back. I believe it was April called Ultraman Raising. I mean, Rising. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, There's a actually, point I will make about that here in a bit. <laughs> actually, it came out uh, June 14th. No, it didn't. Yep. It is. <laughs> <laughs> release date <laughs> no it didn't <laughs> i don't believe you so we'll be discussing i'm, I'm looking i'm looking at <laughs> wikipedia over here i'm pulling a ron burgundy on you <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be discussing that this episode uh but before we get into the discussion jason the usual yeah if you see a subscribe button down below or above or above us wherever you're watching us make sure to hit that subscribe button as well smash the like button and uh if you're listening to us on your uh favorite audio streams uh you can subscribe to us on those uh, audio platforms so do that <laughs> <laughs> so do that <laughs> that's a that's a command that is yeah. not an ask that's a command <laughs> indeed <laughs> all right so we ready to dive in uh yeah pretty much all right, so Ultraman Rising that apparently came out in June, which I don't believe, uh, is uh, is sort of another co-production by uh, Netflix and another Japanese product production company, Superaya Productions, of course, because they own the Ultraman stuff. Although, don't get me into the whole weird licensing stuff that some guy in Thailand had. Don't don't even get me started. I'm just going to say <laughs> Superaya Productions owns it. That's it. Yes. So. Uh, this is an, uh, a CGI animated film. In fact, hand-drawn animation almost doesn't exist anymore. So, um, <laughs> so it has that uh, Into the Spider-Verse uh, type of vibe or sort of the animation. Not sort the of. animation. I would say character and environmental design, but not like, animation itself. Like I was saying, sort of kind of in that realm. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, so, um, I, I have seen this twice now. I saw it once, uh, within like a few weeks after it was initially released. And then of course I watched it again here just a few days ago in preparation for this show. And then Jason for the first time, uh, here saw it just a few hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're usually better at this than I am, Jason, in terms of like where to go. Like I said, I'm so used to doing like the common writer commentaries and Spectre Man commentaries for so long that I sort of am out of the rhythm as far as like how to go about from here in terms of a general discussion. So why don't you uh, kind of lead the discussion here? Well, I just want to say that my mind has been kind of <laughs> a little bit everywhere this morning. So uh, excuse me, because... <laughs> As of a few minutes ago, my mind was blanking out there. But um, yeah, as far uh, how how do we um, let's see where would be the best to start? Um, how about um, how about the uh, the characters uh, of Ultraman Rising? What what do you think of? Uh, the main characters and as well as the, the supporting characters um, overall. Okay. So we're kind of going like getting ready to go into the pool, but instead of going in at three feet and gradually working into the deep end, we're going in 
to like the middle part of the pool here. Um, <laughs> so, okay. I just want to preface uh, what I'm about to say with that part of what I'm going to be talking about with the characters is going to um, connect with elements of the story as well. So it's going to be a combination of the two as I proceed from here. Um, okay. It's it, boy. Um, I'm trying to, I, I don't want to be, I'm trying to organize my thought for a moment because I don't want to be jumping all over the place here. Um, so let me just say, if you've seen films like three men and a baby, the pacifier, um, any type of film in which characters, and it's usually men, even daddy daycare, for example, um, it's usually men, male characters put in a situation to take care of a child or children. Then you've seen Ultraman rising. That is basically the gist of the film. With that being said, getting into character work, our main character, Kenji or Ken Sato, uh, is like any other stereotypical character you would see out of a movie, like those I just mentioned, where this is a male character. He is a professional baseball player who um, uh, we see him as a kid in the first couple minutes to start the film, and then it jumps forward probably 20-something years to where he played with the Dodgers for a few years, and now he's back in Tokyo playing with um, the Giants. What's the what's the actual like city name? What's the um, I forget the name of that. It's uh, what Matsuki or no, no uh, Matsui played on um, uh, the uh, Yoma Yomuri uh, Giants. Okay, yeah, because I I don't but they're, but they're based in Tokyo. But yeah, yeah. I just kind of forgot like the city name, so to speak, uh, uh, of that. I team. don't think it's really a city name. I'm Probably sure. a district. Something. I'm not entirely sure. I, I know. I'm not familiar with Japanese. I baseball. sort of delved into it, but I didn't re- quite delve into the actual name, you know, Yomori. Um, I would have suspected it would just be Tokyo Giants because I know there's another, another Tokyo team not too terribly far playing at a different stadium from, uh, from the Giants because they play over at the Tokyo Dome there. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure <laughs> the reason yeah. behind that. Name, I'm not so. familiar with Japanese baseball in terms of, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure the game more or less is played the same, but I'm not familiar in terms of like all the team names and where they're located and stuff. Um, I barely even pay attention to professional baseball here in the States. Um, <laughs> so um, basically he's in his twenties. He, his dad, when he was a child was Ultraman technically in a way still is an Ultraman, but now he somehow has become an Ultraman. He comes home for reasons, mainly um, his mother has disappeared and he still has like a rough relationship with his dad because his dad, he thinks uh, didn't go searching after his mother when she disappeared. And so he's very egotistic. Yes. I just want a uh, quick button. Um, the reason why is that the team is owned uh, by a uh, media conglomerate over there called the Yomori uh, Shimbun Holdings. Uh, there so that's that's where the name comes from yeah because oh, now yeah. I, now now i remember it's like a lot of the sports teams over there are owned by companies that's so actually they, bad so that <laughs> they, yeah. well it's like a lot of them will have like the company name before the nickname and stuff but i know there there are others that will have a town name so yeah there you go <laughs> that's actually terrible that would be like having like the Amazon slugs, well, the Walmart, I think, um, you know, Vipers. Because I think, because <laughs> uh, I think a lot of them, like, uh, like the, uh, a Japanese American Football League over there called the X League, where a majority of those teams are owned by companies, and a lot of those uh, players and stuff 
uh, work for the company and stuff. And there's like a lot of uh, things over there. So their stuff is set up a, a lot differently compared to <laughs> us over here. I don't know. If, I mean, it's bad enough that, you know, you get certain things involved with professional sports over here, but that to me sounds even worse than what we got over here. But um, <laughs> anyways, anyways, <laughs> um, but he's an egotistical guy. And during one night, uh, when a uh, gigantron, uh, a new Kaiju that is introduced by the people who produce this movie, uh, comes up, there is this, uh, Kaiju egg that is, uh, hatched. It was originally, uh, stolen from Gigantron by the Kaiju Defense Force there in Tokyo to lure Gigantron out. And then during the tussle with Ultraman, the egg um, is, uh, gets out of their grasp, finds out it's an egg, it hatches, and Ken takes it back to his very Bruce Wayne-like type of, of home. And the baby Gigantron imprints on him. And the the same old song and dance uh, happens with these kinds of movies where he is flabbergasted, he's beside himself, he doesn't want any part of it, no responsibility. But then through a montage, um, ends up, you know, coming to terms with this situation and ends up caring for uh, this baby Gigantron Kaiju in which... Uh, his father eventually names Emmy, which is the name of his mother. And then the rest of the movie is about trying to protect this baby from uh, the Kaiju Defense Force and what they presume to be Mecha Gigantron, but is actually Gigantron just suited up in um, mech armor by the Kaiju Defense Force at the end of the movie to lure Emmy out to try to find this mysterious kaiju island because the head of the kaiju defense force dr onda 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 um his family was killed uh, by kaiju odd number of years earlier he's pissed he's already killed an odd number of kaiju he wants to go to kaiju island and kill the remaining kaiju okay so that more or less is kind of the story with a little bit of character work peppered in because i think that's kind of important for people to understand uh that with that being said like i said they're it's tropish none of these characters are original none of them really stand out and in fact i'm going to say that sato i don't think is really all that likable uh he becomes a, to me anyways a tad likable towards the end but because he's such a jerk and he's still very egotistical through all the way till the end until like the final two minutes, which isn't enough for me to really win me over to his side. Um, Sato is, is not a likable character. I don't even like him as Ultraman because he's such a prick. And look, I understand they're trying to tell that story, but like I said, I've seen this before. I'm tired of this formula. And on top of that too, He's such a jerk throughout most of the two hour runtime that by the time they make him likable, there's not enough time to sort of stick with him for me to like him enough by movies end. To kind of get into a little bit of the story aspect, because this also weaves in with character work. This story is longer than it should be. It's muddled and it takes shortcuts in areas that it shouldn't. And it expands on things that it really shouldn't. They should have either been cut out or shortened. <laughs> the beginning of this movie is a very good start, but then it fast forwards, which is fine. But then I expect to get more information about, Ken and his dad and his mom and we do a little bit but it's not enough for me to totally understand Ken's journey to how he got to be an egotistical prick um how did he end up becoming an ultra man because from my understanding of the ultra universe to be an ultra man like you have to be a very special person 
to be part of the Ultraman squad. <laughs> His dad was an Ultraman. How did he become an Ultraman? Meaning Ken. And I, I, I find this hilariously bad in that this whole movie kind of behind the scenes He's upset with his dad because his mother disappeared. I'm like, wait, 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 like she left him? No, she just disappeared. I've never heard of anything like this in a movie. Or usually if they say someone disappears, we find up later that they're dead. She probably is dead, but they don't find a body or anything like that here in this movie. They just say she disappears. And I'm like, that's one of the weirdest, oddest, creepiest, dumbest things I've ever heard in a film. She's like, she just left? We we even by movies that we have no idea what happened to her other than she, as they say, disappeared. It's one of the most hilariously bad things about this film. She disappeared, and I can't go along with the journey that Ken is feeling. That even his dad is feeling. They try to mend that a little bit, but what they end up doing is they go through same old song and dance tropes that we've seen in similar movies. Um, again, we go through a montage of Ken's growing into the job of being a kaiju parent. And I will say there are moments uh, when Ken's trying to take care of uh, Emmy that hit me kind of hard, but that's because I'm a parent. I have two kids and it sort of reminded me at times of when my kids were babies and trying to take care of them. But I think for most people who aren't parents or have never been parents, I don't think it's going to hit them with the feels all that much. But even then, I've seen this whole thing before. Character development makes no sense, is sparse, and I just I can't connect with any of these characters. The reporter gal should have played a more integral role. In this movie, what was her name? I forget her name. I'm not very good with these. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mina, I believe. Mina, yeah. It seemed like kind of early on she was going to play a bigger role because she kind of is involved there for about five, ten minute period. And then by and large, more or less disappears. She doesn't help like push Ken to become a better version of himself or to help him grow in any substantial way she's just there for the audience to try to poke and prod a little bit more into his history but or his past i should say but even then she doesn't do a very good job of it because we still don't learn enough in the grand scheme of things about him and his past because i don't mind the jump into the future like what they did but usually if you do that at some point in the movie, usually kind of by the middle part, you start to see and fill in more of the gaps. We don't get that with Ken. Because when we see him as a little boy at the beginning of the movie, he seems like a wonderful kid who is obviously terrified of kaiju and loud sounds and stuff like that. You know, uh, loves baseball and is very tight with his parents and all that. And then we fast forward and he's this egotistical jerk and is that way up until the final few minutes of the film. I I don't care for these characters. Even Dr. Onda is a very stereotypical character. Kaiju killed my family, now I want to kill them all. Okay, I mean, I understand there's no original ideas out there, but can you expound upon that? The movie doesn't. They don't put him in the movie enough to try to do that. They, there's one brief moment they try to make him sympathetic, but it doesn't really work because, again, they don't spend enough time with him in the course of the film. And then at the end of the movie, when he turns his stealth like fighter plane into a mech to fight uh, Ken and his dad in Ultraman form, and then the uh, Gigantron mother. He becomes this bloodthirsty villain. And so, again, trying to sympathize with a character like him, the villain, it doesn't work because the writers of this film, I think, focus too much on areas that should have been shortened or cut out and not enough on 
other important areas and filling in the gaps because this movie, I think if you don't count the credits is like an hour and 50 minutes. That's too long for a movie like this. Way too long. This should have been at max an hour and a half. And I think if they did that, this movie would be better, even though it's still a tropish movie, but maybe the character work would have been better as a result because they would have forced them to pay closer attention to things like what's important in telling the story and developing our characters. But instead, if you give them almost an unlimited amount of time to tell your story, a lot of bad decisions happen. And I think a lot of bad decisions were made in terms of the characters and how to go about telling this story. Mm-hmm. Now you kind of went a little bit everywhere. There. Well, I told you that, <laughs> that the character work kind of blends in with the story. Yeah. Um, as far as um, the character part of it, um, I probably would disagree with you a little bit on some of the things there as far as uh the main character ken or kenji um acting uh the way he was i would say that um he did you know act a little bit more egotistical you know when he when we get to the present part uh into the movie but then as time went on he started to um soften up a little bit especially uh once he gets the uh the baby uh gigatron uh there and tries to do a lot of stuff but then calls this uh mina gal and uh tries to um trying to figure out how she can do things you know being a parent herself and all that um and to try to kind of get some advice in a way and then he starts to when once she gives him the advice and everything i think that you start to then see improvements on his character uh there and um i would say overall the uh the character development here i i say was pretty good in its own way um <laughs> And and I know that we were talking in, uh, earlier before we started doing the the recording here and kind of get got your reason reasoning behind it because I from what you said that you were more or less exposed to a lot of the the reactions uh, of the movie and how a lot of people were praising it and everything and I think and and in your own terms when a lot of people have been praising a lot of things and. <laughs> you get sort of the reaction of eh, kind of the, the meh reaction. And I, can I uh, like uh, elaborate a little bit more on that is that I think, okay, like if I didn't see any of those reactions, I still would have gone in excited because I'd be like, okay, like a, a new brand new Ultraman thing. I still, I don't think I would come out like, I still would come out not enjoying this. Because, again, like I said, if you've seen a movie like Three Men and a Baby, you've seen this kind of movie. Um, And not only is it something that I've seen time and again, it's I've not only seen it time and again, and all these movies are more or less the same. um, I think um, I'm not a fan of those kinds of movies to begin with, because, again, like I said, they're all really the same. And thirdly, um. I just don't think something like this necessarily fits with Ultraman unless you are trying to uh, show it to kids. And I don't think the filmmakers here were trying to exclusively show it to kids. I think this was meant to try to cater to a broader audience. And I personally think, and I, I don't think I said this yet as since we started recording, I don't think this movie was exclusively made for kids. And I think as a result, most adults are going to walk away from this going, this isn't what I was hoping to get out of an Ultraman movie. And this is sort of kind of where I'm, uh, where I sort of disagree with you on this front. Cause I know a lot of times that you'll talk 
as far as trying to do something a little bit different with well, yeah. certain things. And certainly this was different compared to many of the other Ultraman because most, most of the stuff that we see in all Ultraman series, even today, is a bit formulaic. And it, to me, is sort of getting a bit tiresome. So try to do something a little bit different. And I think that this is where that they want to do something a little bit different. And this is kind of where I'm diving into more of the story. And from what I saw, as far as uh, KDF being more of the villain this time around, instead of, you know, any of the Kaiju and any of the Ultraman series, I think is more of a breath of fresh air into the whole Ultraman franchise, trying to do something a little bit different than the whole same formulaic uh, aspect. But uh, I would at least agree with you as far as the story is that we don't even know what the heck happened to uh, Kenji's mother and all that that was that was a little bit um strange in a way that we never and, and the know. relationship with his dad in those um years from what we saw at the beginning when he was a child to when he's a pro player mm-hmm. and let me just say like yeah i'm again and i've said this repeat i even said this multiple times when we talked about shin godzilla i'm offered doing something new but it's in the execution and i'm not going to go over Shin Godzilla. You, you know, my thoughts on that are out there. You can go find them. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm not, it's not a secret. Um, but like I was saying here earlier, the writers, I don't think they did, did a very good job of really focusing on what needed to be focused on. And I think trying to make this a broader audience type of film was the wrong thing to do. What they should have done, not only just, done a better job writing. Um, But what they should have also done is try to make this more exclusively for younger audiences. And as a result of it, trying to be more of a broad audience, I have to be a bit tougher on it because that includes me. And for someone like myself, I just don't think it works because again, of writing and focusing issues um, involved. I will give this. I will. Okay. And then a lot of people say, well, then like, do you have any ideas of what maybe they could have done instead? I do. I do have one idea. I had two, but I already forgot it, but I know I have one instead. If you want to have a story about Ultraman being about family oriented and, and all that, one idea could have been that you have something along the similar lines of the original Ultraman series where you have Ken instead of being a pro player um, is Ultraman. And again, how he became Ultraman is a complete and total mystery here. He just is, which kind of bugs the heck out of me, but have him be part of the M 78 group or whatever you want to call it. And then between him and his colleagues kind of realize like, look, we are a family or maybe have them find an orphan Kaiju that either a Kaiju killed the parent or when Ultraman killed the parent that they realize, Oh, we have to raise this kid and the group together. And then together as a group, they help each other because you're going to get different perspectives. And I think on top of that, you're going to be able to, And again, this still requires good writing, but with more characters in the four, you are going to be forced to not only develop everybody, but to um, look at various sides of issues in terms of what it means to be a part of a family and how to raise a child and all that. Or like I said, take the kaiju element out uh, entirely in terms of, um, you know, the, the, the thing of um the baby and focus on each other and realize like oh my gosh like none of us are married or have families and like they kind of realize that even though they're work colleagues um that they are their own family like you hear athletes for example say over the course of a season they're with their second family because they eat and sleep and travel with these guys however many months out of the year 
And so have them kind of learn that that way. So that's like one or two different ideas there that they could have approached this. The way that they did it here it is not very well done. It's like I said with Shin Godzilla, it's in the execution. And I mean, forget the fact too that I'm not a huge fan of these kinds of movies where some guy comes, oh, I don't want to take care of a kid. And then over the course of the movie, you know, falls in love with, you know, the role of being a surrogate parent. Forget that. Just the execution of the story itself, how it's written is very sloppy in my mind because I, it could, even if you wanted to tell this exact story, there were better ways of doing it. Um, because one of the keys is figuring out what happened in that 15, 20 year odd span. Um, because it's fine if you jump forward, but then you have to fill in some of those big gaps in there because what we start out with versus what we end up with, there's still a lot of question marks. I still walk away still trying to figure out exactly how things turned out the way that they did because it's so poorly done. I still laugh when they just say mom disappeared. I did, like I said earlier, I've never heard of anything like that. And, and if someone does say that, we always find out that they either find them again or we find a body. None of that happens. And mm -hmm. I thought at the end, yeah, we would find out that she was, uh, I don't know, somewhere and then comes home or that she would be a, a special Ultraman character that would come out towards the end. Or and another thing that I think is really hilarious is they talk about this mysterious Kaiju Island that no one knows exists. And I go, are you <laughs> kidding me? Because with all the satellites we have, we know where every single island is on this planet. And you like nobody knows where it is. Give me a break. And on top of that, when we actually see part of Kaiju Island at the end, it's this massive island. I'm going, how do you not know where something that big is? It's just, it's poorly written. The one thing I want to add as far as uh, the mother there, I would have assumed that she probably would have come back towards the end. Like after all this time and stuff since her disappearance, I thought she, uh, for the purpose that she was trying to fi figure out where Kaiju Island was, that's, that was my assumption in a way. But then as far as the location of Kaiju Island, where you mentioned about as far as, silent uh satellites and everything so time out <laughs> I, I know but it's but, still uh, so dumb considering the, when we see how yeah, big it is but the other thing is you can say the same thing with uh skull island with the monster first you know with all the satellites and everything and and all that uh with kaiju island with this movie it was also just like skull island it was also surrounded by huge amounts of clouds, mist, fog, wherever you want to uh, name it. And you can say sort of the same thing with Skull Island after all these years, I would say since from the, like the 76 uh, calm movie all the way up to, to now pretty much uh, with all the satellites and everything. But um, yeah, as far as the whole, other situation that's sort of my mind was going towards like we would see her towards the end uh like trying to figure out where kaiju island was well yeah but you talk about like skull island like if you're talking about the kong skull island movie that movie was taking place in the early 70s and while we had satellites a lot of them were used to spy on russia but even then we didn't have enough um satellites in the sky nor did we use them enough to map out enough of the of the uh, globe like we have since then and this movie ultraman rising is contemporary it's present day like anything like kaiju island should have been found like two or three decades ago and i mean i know it's maybe that's a nitpick but i just i still if this movie were held in like the seventies or eighties, I'd be more willing to go with it because that's like what skull Island, the first skull Island movie was, it was in the early seventies, but. Well, I think that, that was sort of the same yeah. at the beginning of the movie. I think the way, the way it looked like that was taking place, it looked like it was taking place 
maybe in the eighties or something of the sort, a dumb thumbs up thing. I don't even have it on screen. <laughs> uh, it, just the way how things looked like at the beginning of the movie, it seemed like it was taking place during that sort of specific time. Right. Maybe. But even then, by the time he's an adult, it should have been found. Oh, and no, Dr. Not. Onda is so bloodthirsty to kill all these kaiju. I would have thought he would have made sure as much money as he could get his hands on to go into his, um, his organization that they would have done everything they could to boost satellites and every other thing to not only for weapons, but to just find the place as well, because that's been his obsession. It's not only just to kill any Kaiju that, um, that, um, you know, comes to Tokyo or Japan and starts trashing cities. It's always been about finding that place and just finishing them off there. But I think, more or less with it being surrounded by fog and everything, just like Skull Island. I think that could be also the reason to, even if you have satellite, you probably would think, you know, so you would assume that there wouldn't be anything there, there, but I mean, it could be an area where there could be a lot of clouds or fog, uh, somewhere on the globe, wherever that's located, but still, <laughs> I mean, I understand what you're saying, but human nature, I mean, when you take a look at human history, humans have always been ultra curious. And I don't mean that in, in like a pun way, like Ultraman here, but, but like you look at all the different um, explorers that went across various oceans and around various continents and stuff, you know, trying to map things out the, as best as they could at the time and things like that. We, humans have always been a very curious species to try to figure out what their, what their space looks like. I mean, just trying to find every nook and cranny because that's just how we're wired. And like, even if they came across an area that was heavily fogged, I don't think they would be like, okay, well let's not proceed any farther. They would have proceeded farther and would have eventually stumbled upon it. Um, I just, I just personally don't buy it. I just don't. Um, because to me, it just, it makes no sense, especially given the fact that this is a movie that takes place in modern times. To me, you know, with this being sort of geared more towards the kids audience and sort of the way how a lot of the Ultraman shows were even back in the day. And you told me so many times with certain things, you're thinking way too much into this. <laughs> I am, but see, this is like a critique. Like this yes, is our review. But you're just really, th you're really thinking into it. Well, I am, and a lot of it is because this movie is not as well written. I'll, th there are things I can go with if I kind of know that what they're doing is kind of shits and giggles. Like we're just throwing this thing out there. We know it's not terrific. You know, here's like some weird creature and stuff like I can go with that. Like the original Ultraman series is by no means perfect, but I know it's tongue in cheek fun. This is actually trying to be serious. This is actually trying to tell what they think is a good, genuine story. And there's differences. Um, you know, like I will grade something like uh son of godzilla differently from shin godzilla because i know son of godzilla is not really trying to be serious with what it's doing shin godzilla is though and so yeah i'm gonna look at it and critique it a little bit differently it's the same way with this versus me, like the original ultraman series for me when i at the the point of view of what i'm looking at it i get more of the vibes of some of the the pixar movies where they Kind of have you know it's a lot of those are geared towards children, but then you also have to bring in you know the the adult aspect on certain things, and a lot of a lot of those things work out for a lot of the movies, and sometimes you know they don't. But uh, that's sort of where I would say this is where the the Ultraman Rising movie is trying to do is trying to go kind of that pixel uh pixar route where 
yes, it's trying to gear towards children and everything, but then also trying to bring in uh, the adult aspect uh, to it just to try to, you know, kind of make things make sense. Although there are some things in the story where, <laughs> like the mother situation, I'm not going to go back to that. But, um, no, let's do. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, I can see where they are trying to go, uh, with it. Um, kind of the whole overall aspect of it is kind of make it sort of that Pixar esque type of story uh, and vibe. I'm not sure what exactly I'm trying to. <laughs> Go, right, uh, I get what you're saying. I'm glad you brought up no the exact name of it, but I'm yeah, glad you brought ahead. up Pixar because that was something I had thought about at one point too, and I totally forgot until you brought it up. But yeah, this is trying to pull a Pixar of sorts. And the difference though is that I think they are coming up incredibly short here. Um, I think yeah, that's what they're trying to emulate is what Pixar has done and done well for most of their films. Uh, Because, yeah, neither Pixar movie is terrific, but I would argue most of them are. Um, And and that's the thing. Like, this, I think, is trying to do that, which is fine. But the problem is in the final product, in my mind, is the way they wrote it and kind of what they decided to focus on but shouldn't have instead of what they should have focused on but didn't. I think that's where the problem is. By the way, okay, I want to give, I, I, you know, I don't want to keep being negative on this because I don't hate the movie. And part of the reason why I'm being so hard on it is because, um, I, like I said, I just don't think this film in a general sense is that well written. But I saw so many people also online in the weeks following this film's release on Netflix saying it was like one of the best Ultraman things they had seen in years. And so I went and hyped like, okay. Like, let's do this. And I walked away from this kind of like, I don't understand what people see in this. I really don't. And look, if if watching Ultraman r- become a surrogate parent is your, is your jive, fine. More power to you. But I'm just saying from what I've seen the two times I've seen this movie, I don't see that for the reasons I've already stated. But the, uh, one of the big positives I want to give this film is I do like the animation and the uh, designs of the characters in the environment in this film. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had mentioned like the, the animated Spider-Man multiverse uh, type of films. <laughs> I don't like going there because I don't like those films. I don't think those films are as good as people claim they are. Well, That's a totally different discussion. Well, but I the, think the animation to those gives me a headache as well. This, well, I think, and- is better than that. Well, and to be honest, I have never seen those Spider Verse uh, movies, but just from seeing the trailers and uh, excerpts of it here and there since their release, is that just seeing the kind of animation that it is that they have, it sort of gave me a little bit of that vibe where it's sort of uh, where the animation was sort of in that um realm uh to say the least but yeah i would agree with you the as far as the animation part of both the uh the world and the characters themselves i really like it um there's there's a little bit of uh nitpicks here and there on certain things i've seen in the animation but i'm not going to really dive into it but uh yeah overall i uh did I do like uh, the animation portion of this film, and I think it's uh, really good in how they uh, did a lot of, of the designs of many of the things there. But uh, as and then as far as uh, the score for the film, what are your thoughts if you sort of? Uh, I forgot there was one until you mentioned it. <laughs> it. It's that it's that underplayed. I mean, I guess that's fine. I to be quite honest, I kind of forgot. <laughs> like I know there's music, but it obviously didn't make much of an impression on me. I mean, I guess it's fine. I mean, I, I, I I'm not very high on it, nor am I very negative. So this isn't 
if they offered a CD to buy it, I wouldn't buy it. I mean, that, that's kind of where I would be at. Yeah. Um, I would at least say that they didn't use any of the copyright <laughs> music, like a lot which of strange, of these, really. which a lot of these uh, uh, movies kind of like these type of movies will have sort of those copyright, you know, tracks and, and all that, but uh, they don't. So it was, it's really good that they uh, just did their own music and everything. But um, yeah, I was sort of, uh, I'm sort of with you that I didn't quite notice the music a whole lot, but there, there were some instances, instances that I did uh, hear some of the music and I thought it was uh, pretty decent uh, to, to go along with this uh, kind of movie. And I want to say, too, just to kind of give this movie more props, just to prove, again, I'm not a hater on it. Um, I like the beginning of this movie because I think it's an incredible setup. Uh, it, you know, to me, it's 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 very uh, emotionally heartstring pulling. Uh, but then kind of once they fast forward and you kind of get into things, it's like, OK, well, the good stuff's done. And then I would say kind of near the very end. When. Uh, Ken finds out that the Gigantron, what he thinks is just a mechanical version of Gigantron, is actually the real Gigantron just outfitted with a bunch of metal armor. And you just kind of see, like, the Gigantron mother kind of, like, you know, in pain and stuff because it just kind of got the crap kicked out of it a little bit. Um, like, to me, that sort of thing was kind of touching and stuff, uh, seeing that. Um but, um, yeah, I find it funny, though, too, that, you know, how they have, like, the characters at the end battle kind of stand up and, like, the water's up to their waist. But then, like, when Ken is no longer Ultraman, starts sinking, like, the water then is endless. Like, what are mm -hmm. you guys standing on? <laughs> you know, well, that whole kaiju thing that we've seen so many other movies. Well, it's like, and it's, how are they standing up and yet the water's that deep? Yeah, and, and I know you posted... Uh, that meme uh, on your Facebook page that I've seen with uh, the one famous picture from Godzilla King and the Monsters where he comes out from the ocean and a lot of, and I've seen others post similar or the exact same meme where he stands up, but then like they draw legs or <laughs> do legs like, an AI, like, AI sort of gener <laughs> like an AI uh, generated image of this really long leg underneath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i just i'm not gonna count that against the movie because so many other kaiju movies but i just i mean again it's just every, like if you're not paying kaiju, close enough attention, every kaiju movie is like if you're gonna you know the if you're gonna mention that it's like you're gonna have to mention that for all the kaiju movies that have ever existed <laughs> oh i know but yeah it's just i i'm like wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> there we go again <laughs> It's, it's like that, uh, was it the Leonardo DiCaprio type of meme? It was like, <laughs> <laughs> you froze up there. I didn't see what you did there. Well, it's like, it's like that one, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio meme where he's like doing that. Oh, uh, yeah. Thing, pointing <laughs> at the TV where he's watching it from the, uh, the, what's it, the, um, uh, the, the recliner. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we just go into our final thoughts uh, on the film? So why don't you go ahead? Okay. Um, I want to say Ultraman Rising should have been renamed Ultraman Raising because that's more of what he's doing here. He's raising a baby kaiju. What is he rising from? We don't even see the origins of Ken becoming an Ultraman. And there's, and I don't want to go in and rehash and spend like another 10, 15 minutes solo style uh trying to rehash everything that i just said i've already mentioned it once if not a couple times already throughout the course of this discussion uh, i think character work is terribly sloppy i think the storytelling is not only sloppy but um not focused properly uh, the way that it should if you're trying to tell the story that they're attempting to tell um i think I will say Ultraman Rising is a film that if you show uh, younger kids, kids probably around the ages starting at four or five, going all the way up to maybe 10 or so, 
they'll probably enjoy this film. The thing is, is that I do not believe this movie was intended specifically, or should I say exclusively, for that age group. Excuse me, I'm drinking all this soda and carbonated water. Um, That's why I got some coffee. (laughs) Yeah, I need to quit doing it, but I I love this stuff. Um, So... That's that's part of the problem. I, I think if, and, and, and again, I'm not saying that to excuse like poor writing, because I'm not saying that when you write a kid's movie, you should it's OK to have bad writing. That's not what I'm saying. But writing for kids movies tends to be simpler because their brains are still developing. They don't have the capacity for more sophisticated understanding of other things. This movie, I think, is definitely try to gear towards a very wide audience. and. I think for older fans, this just isn't going to work because there's a lot in the writing here that is just not done very well. Again, like with Shin Godzilla and some other things that I haven't liked, I give them an A for effort, but the execution is where this whole thing falters. Um, I, I don't care for the characters. I don't even really like, still don't even like Ken Sato by the end of this thing. Uh, Mina, I thought, was supposed to have a bigger role in this. She should have had a bigger role in this. What happened in like the 20 years from the start of the movie to when he's a baseball player that we see in five minutes into the beginning of the film, uh, you know, what happened to like him and his relationship with his dad, the fact that his mother just disappeared is one of the strangest things I have ever seen in a film and is also incredibly unimaginative, lazy writing as well. Um, Ultraman is even barely in this film, really, now that I think about it. And that's something that I was going to bring up now that I think about it, and I didn't uh, up until this point, because he's barely in this. He's usually Ken Sato, like, 90% of this film. There's not a whole lot of kaiju fighting. The villain is not in it enough, nor is as sympathetic as the writers would like us to believe he is. Um, a lot of this is very tropish. And I understand, again, that there's no real original ideas, but you can take some of those um, unoriginal ideas and maybe make them better by adding in certain story and character elements that other films before you didn't do as well. Ultraman Rising actually falters from all that. Um the animation, though, is fantastic. I, I like the animation. I like the designs of the characters. I like the design of the world. I like the color palette uh, presented um, here. I think the opening sequence is very powerful, and I think there's a, a moment or two at the end with a Gigantron that um, is very touching. I like the fact, too, that, uh, what's his name, Dr. Onda is not killed in this mm-hmm. film. Um, the, but whatever happened to him afterwards is, is unknown. Um, this movie, I, I don't get what people who fell in love with this see it. If you love it, that's terrific. But I totally disagree that this is one of the best Ultraman things to have come along in a long time. I, to be quite honest, think it's one of the worst. Um, this movie should have been better it really should have been and it's unfortunately not and uh again like i said to start this final thought i think if you show this to younger kids they'll enjoy it and even if you're an adult and you like this hey more power to you i just don't think most adults who do watch it and are ultraman fans are gonna really care for it and are gonna see a lot of the same problems that i'm seeing i didn't really care for it with that, I got to give this I'm kind of torn between like two grades here. Um, one I think is not strong enough, but then the next one I think is a little too strong. Um, <laughs> if there's such a great, I'm kind of tr- trying to choose between a D plus and a C minus. Um, I was about ready to make up my own grade, but then that's just not going <laughs> to work. <laughs> I'm going to say D plus. I think this is a D plus film. Um, This isn't one I'm going to go and revisit much on. I've seen it twice over. According to Jason, this thing came out in June. I've seen it twice in like what, two and a half months. 
Um, I, I'm not going to see this again at all the remainder of this year. I don't see myself watching again for another few more years. Um, I, I just, I just don't think this was the best way to tell this story. Even if this, there's a better way to tell this exact same story with the same characters and stuff that you have and to do it better. And they just didn't do it. I, I don't think other than the animation and stuff and the designs, this to me is, is a huge <laughs> thumbs down. Yeah. As far as, as far as uh, this movie goes for me, I've only seen it uh, this morning and um, with all the characters, um, they do uh, develop and all that stuff. I would say that they're uh, pretty good. There could have been a little bit more potential uh, as far as the characters. And I would probably say the same thing with the story. Um, I did like the direction that they were uh, trying to go with it. Something new and fresh uh, with it, too. But then uh, there's certain things I'm not going to discuss. We've already talked about earlier that they've probably should have rounded out um as far as the story goes and everything and the animation uh for this movie is like uh it's really good really good animation nothing like what we've ever seen in any of the kaiju um animations that have been done so far uh for this uh genre and um yeah, and then uh, whatever there was as far as the score and everything, it sounded pretty good for what was going for for the movie um, as well. And um, uh, let's see here, what else? Um, I with with it being to me with it being more with them trying to. Uh, do something kind of in the route like a Pixar movie goes, I think uh, does a pretty good job with it. But um, again, with the whole mother thing, should have tried to done something to do with that. But it seems like that they um, sort of missed the mark on that aspect. I would say that would be sort of my biggest uh, Dean on this uh, film that they just didn't, <laughs> they just, did a whole complete mystery on that uh, front up with a lot of the other things. I think they did a pretty good job uh, on it. And I think too, and what I uh, explained earlier during our discussion that is felt like Kent was sort of <laughs> affected by a lot of the reactions and stuff by people on social media. Whereas when it comes to me, I wasn't really exposed rarely if not at all by a lot of the people on social media when it came to when this uh animate animated film was released so and with kick sort of explaining it before i went into it i was sort of in the middle of the, of the road uh to sort of say to kind of kind of get my mind sort of prepared with it but i think i came out of it thinking that it was a bit better than I thought it was going to be in, in a way. Yes, there's certain things with it that uh, could have been done better with it, mainly the story part uh, to it. So with that said, uh, for for my final uh, grade for Ultraman Rising, I would... I'm sort of like you. I'm trying to figure out uh, kind of going what gray I want to go with it. Um, but I think I'll go with a B minus for Ultraman Rising. I think that would be a pretty good uh, gray for me for this movie. I would say it did a pretty good job. There should have been, at least been some some improvements, mainly the story part uh, to it. But I, I can see that uh, they were trying to go at a much more different route, much more of a different formula than most of the, the Ultraman franchise has gone to with 
the same old formulaic thing over and over and over again, where this was much different, fresh of breath there compared to all the other uh, Ultraman shows before this one and or films. So um, that's where I, I uh, kind of give it that final grade for. But yeah, uh, really good movie. Should have uh, done some things as far as certain executions on certain things. But uh, yeah, B minus for Ultraman Rising for me. Okay, so uh, moving forward, we're actually going to continue our Netflix journey <laughs> with uh, discussing the um, Ultraman anime that has been on Netflix over the last, like, what, six, seven years. Um, I was thinking what we do here in a couple of weeks is discuss season one. And then uh, a couple of weeks after that, season two. And a couple of weeks after that, the third season. And then just final final thoughts on the on the whole shebang i i would have liked to have done season one and two together <laughs> but fireworks <laughs> <laughs> i've never seen that one jason was on fire <laughs> I, I just did two thumbs up and all of a sudden fireworks just popped out will it happen my again? Seat. <laughs> do it again do it again will it happen again <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you got the weirdest thing going on over I'm, there. I'm not even sure why none of these thumbs up or just recently or the confetti or the fireworks stuff have never happened for you. <laughs> Maybe because I don't have that equipment over here. But well, it should it shouldn't matter what the equipment. It should happen. It should happen no matter like on the uh, the platform that we're using to record. Yeah. Yes, it should. It should happen no matter what. But <laughs> for those that the audio version, Jason went uh, at hyper speed <laughs> yes, <laughs> with fireworks. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I would have liked to do done like season one and two at a time. But everything because I'm doing physical therapy to rehab some of my joints and uh, my son's in soccer and stuff too. Things are like a lot busier around here than I would like. So uh, it would be easier for me if we did like one season at a time, because in that way, I'm not feeling like pressured to get like, what is it? I think each season is what, 12 episodes or something, or is it six? If I can remember when watching the first two seasons, I think that they were 12. Episodes. They are 12. Oh, actually, no, 13. Oh, OK. Like According I said, it's 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 been so many years since the last time I've seen the first two episodes, uh, first two seasons. So yeah, I mean that's that's plenty of episodes to try to get in a two week period with my kind of schedule. So and, and what a way to start out our uh, episode two hundred <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. Ultraman anime. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've only seen the first episode of of season one. That was. I don't know, within a few days to a week after it first came out, I forget how many years ago now, I never went back to it. That's not to say I disliked it. I had always meant to go back, but I just got distracted with a bunch of other things. But from what I remember, it's, I think, a little bit more violent than maybe what we're accustomed mm -hmm. to with Ultraman. And like most anime, it's going to dive into, I think, a, a deeper... Uh, story than what we're accustomed it, to have it's as well. It's kind of like the the whole kind of the manga feel. Well, it's based off of a, of a manga that I've read, and I think I discussed about it odd number of years ago. And I know I mentioned about as far as the first season of it, so, sort of right around that time. But it did um, was it the first season uh, from what I'm looking here? It did come out around uh, April 2019. Oh, yeah. Five years ago. That's about right. So, yeah, I mean, kind of like most of the Netflix anime, most people, if they did talk about it, talked about it for a week or two and then it disappeared. So in my book, that means it's going to be great because most <laughs> people aren't talking about it. So it's like, OK, well, that means it's going to be great and I'm going to love it. So I'm anxious to to see that and to discuss it at least season one here in a couple of weeks. So thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you uh, here in a couple of weeks to continue our Netflix journey. All right. We'll see you guys next time.